On today's episode, Dan and Manny are back in class. It's Nostalgia 101, all about cult TV. Here we go. Welcome to the Nostalgia Test Podcast, the show where two longtime friends put their mainstream pop culture past to the ultimate test, the Nostalgia Test. Dan, we're here. It's been a while. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. I mean, it's I don't been... even know where we're at on your releases. Um, so far, we're like because we it, took a so summer far. break, basically. Right? It was a bit of a break. Yeah. And then I got sick. You got, <laughs> you got, you got the vid. You got the yeah, vid. We as... were supposed to do something live. It's coming, ladies and gentlemen. We don't know when, but yeah. it got it got spoiled. We were we had this yeah. whole thing planned. He was going to come to the brewery. He was going to we were going to sit there and get nostalgic with our friends. And instead, I was said the the attic. That's that's because you decided you wanted to go to another vacation before you came here. So I blame you. Well, but anyway, (laughs) guys, we're here. We're we're nerding out again. Yes. You you brought us back to class. I'm excited. Got back, you know, the semester started where I am, so I'm I'm already teaching. So I'm like, why not open up with another really amazing episode? These episodes have been really great. These nostalgia one on one episodes and really looking forward to this one. Um, we are here with an amazing guest, actually, because our emails are so interesting. And I, I've been looking forward to this uh, to this guest. We're here with Clarice Greco, who is a professor and TV studies researcher. Clarice, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. And this is also, Manny, I would, and this is so great, too, because every one of these episodes has been like an international episode. Because yeah, tell everyone where you're coming in from. Well, I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil, uh, and I am a professor and a researcher on television studies from Paulista University. So I have a master and a Ph.D. degree. Uh, where I studied the concepts of cult and quality television as well. And my master was in quality television and I have a book, but in Portuguese, so sorry. <laughs> but, uh, and my, my thesis, my PhD thesis was on the concept of cult television. And nostalgia plays a big role on the notion of cult shows. So mm. I think this is what I'm here to talk about. Well, I would like to hear, uh, I mean, right away, just so we kind of build a foundation, like what, how do you approach this idea of cult TV? Like in, when we see that word, there's a lot of stuff that comes up, but in terms of media or television or movies, like there are different ways and, and different nuances with that term, but how do you, how did you approach it in your research and how do you engage that idea of cult when it comes to te- television? Yeah, the, it's a very uh, common word to say in common sense. People would say, oh, this became a cult or something, right? <laughs> but <clears throat> um, in my thesis, what I approach is for television, basically three aspects of cult would, or three aspects of a TV show would define it as a cult. So the first one would be some aesthetic um, element. So we, we usually see that as a, horror trash um trash code or sci-fi right so basically the first titles that would come to mind would be star trek star wars doctor who the x files those would be cult shows <clears throat> but uh, so genre is related as well right and so but you have also the nostalgia so every time you remember when you went to rent movies and then you would have the shelf of cult films and it will be like Casablanca or Singing in the Rain, Citizen Kane or Gone with the Wind. So this would basically be related to the notion of classic. What is a classic, right? So mm-hmm. something that um, marked an era and made history and in film industry. And actually that's something that many years later, you still have that as a common repertoire. And it becomes a, a cult because it's a, something that it's a shared culture. Right. And but also you have fandom. So basically, in uh, at the in the end, the main aspect when in academia where we study cult is very related to how much 
uh, engagement of fans you can have. So it would be even a small group that would go to see many times uh, a, a play like Rocky Horror Show or something like this. And then you go to this uh, Star Trek and Star Wars, it's because of their fan base, so a fandom. And this would be uh, something that actually becomes related to nostalgia and nerd, nerds as well, because you would have the nostalgia, this feeling of self and identity, and then you will be, uh, you will be, you, you will follow, right? You will be this adoring mm -hmm. audience that will endure this shows mm -hmm. and these films and television it's the same so basically you would have aesthetic and genre related fandom and nostalgia as the three main mm -hmm. aspects for a cult hmm. wow B manny you look like you have something to say i didn't know <laughs> I, well this i'm just thinking I, I about, did, i'm so just thinking about like <laughs> some like what i consider cult movies and i was just and i know i know we're talking about tv but i was just like every time someone says cult uh, a cult movie it, to me was like um independent films were always like became cult cult fo they get a cult following so like with me a cult is like a group all of a sudden becomes very obsessed with the tv or the 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 movie like I always bring up usual suspects. Like, I feel like when you know somebody who watches usual suspects, you like analyze that movie that like, it's crazy. And there's, it's funny because the movie, if you've never seen the movie, you're about to hear a spoiler, but like, it's a made up story, mm -hmm. but yet you could you sit there and somebody and analyze this story and try to see what's real, but none, the guy made it up like in the police office office, um, he just made up the whole story. So no, nothing that you watched was real, but yet you're obsessed with all mm -hmm. the different parts of it. And like, oh, did they know Kaiser Soze was even there? And it's like, well, Kaiser Soze might have not been there at all. But like mm -hmm. it became this like cult following and everybody like was like sharing, especially back in the 90s, you were sharing the video. Like you were just saying, going to the video store and you were sharing the D like someone who bought the VHS was like, Oh, we got to sit down and watch this. Mm. And like you gathered to watch it. So you, your mm. fan base was very close and everybody talked about it. You could talk about that with like TVs, like you brought up star Trek and like that gets a very big cult following. And like people love to make their own characters and then have backstories to those characters so it takes a life of its own where mm. the TV show is more than what it, what you're watching. That episode was great, but there's th like the world is expanded by their own fans. Yeah. Right? I, yeah. I mean, I think right away of like the X-Files, that was like a show that oh, yeah. had such a powerful following, but even though it had a large following, it was still niche because you still had who it was a very like it was a sci fi show. It had, you know, elements of um, horror as well. And it was also hilarious. It was a lot of humor in the X-Files. Right. But only if you watch it, do you get it and you watch it grow over time. And then everyone was also like creating these other stories that were inside of it kind of figuring out if Mulder and Scully were going to like fall in love right <laughs> so you had that but it's the same as even with Star Wars that you were saying before like you have a whole world around Star Wars and yet people like obsess over whether Han Solo or a uh, Greedo shot first it's like <laughs> it, it doesn't matter but no. they have like debates over these things and it's quite amazing to kind of understand that like as like the cult following and how that creates that nostalgia for that and then you, like how it continues generationally exactly so uh, some many things you said i was writing down because i wanted to address <laughs> but first you said um like um non-popular films that would have a cult following and this is something that actually i addressed a lot because in brazil I, and i was talking about television and i talked about telenovelas and this is very mainstream so it would not be possible to have a cult mainstream cult 
right? A cult telenovela. But actually, this has changed among studies because you would have, um, you'd have to have a non mainstream film in cinema. This would work well because people would take the VHS and watch together or make this clubs, uh, film clubs to watch and choose some films. Rocky, Rocky Horror Picture Show was one that I said it became one of the first cults because people would actually, the same people would go to the theater and to watch it again and again in Star Trek. You'd have people writing letters, so please don't cancel the show. Um, this would be the type of cult of intense followers that would make something become a cult because of the ritual mm. cult in a sense like a religion right so you'd actually have this ritual cult uh, but then we also have the things that change because you build a world and this is when you start to have fan studies um dialogues with cult studies or television studies and fans because the fans are the ones who get so deeply into this universe of the narrative mm -hmm. that actually the producers would reply to you giving you bits and prequels and sequels and trilogies seven eight nine whatever uh, so you would have you want more fans want more so it starts as a cult following that can be a subculture and can be a non-mainstream But at the same time, if you have this intense following in, on mainstream shows, you could start thinking, well, 10 years, uh, 20 years the show is on air, people are still following. Maybe it's a cult, you know? So I, I remember I read a book that um, it was Piri, uh, cult, uh, cult Television, something like that, the name of the, the title of the book. But Piri was the... the last name of the author, who organized the book. And he actually says that Grey's Anatomy was a suggestion of a, maybe a cult show. But some academics are like, no, but not. We were talking about horror and vampires and Star Trek, right? How can we talk about Grey's Anatomy? But if you think about it, it's like 17 seasons, whatever. And people actually have fun fix and videos and So, yeah, maybe it is, right? So things mm. change and we have to be open to that. Yeah, I was going to, yeah, go ahead, Manny. Uh, that's funny you said Grey's Anatomy. So, like, uh, my family, my, I have a twin sister um, and she's obsessed with Grey's Anatomy. And I think I've watched, like, maybe five episodes. And I'm like, I don't understand the, like, it's beyond obsession. Like, it's like her and my niece, like, they still, like, You know, nowadays, there is no, like, um, set time to go to someone's house to watch TV, right? Everybody binge watches. It's so easy. It's almost harder to become a cult in a way of getting fans that are together. So when you do achieve that, I find it amazing because my mom and my niece will, will literally go to my sister's house to watch Grey's Anatomy together because I guess it, it's been around so long that it started before binge watching was a thing. Yeah. So they, they are nostalgically watching it on the same day because that's what they were used to when they first watched it. And like, well, we talk about like the cycle of nostalgia where you almost build an identity based on how you feel because of what the, you know, nostalgia does to you. So it's like, are they doing it because they like the show or is it just that they like the feeling they get from when the, shows like when they first knew the characters when they first you know met everybody and got into it and seeing the characters grow and die off or turn into you know get fall in love with this other character and this and that and it's like it's an interesting roller coaster and um what is that called a ferris wheel that you go through With yeah. a show like that. It's both. Like they like the show. They like the characters. The characters have like died or moved. <laughs> nobody's there anymore. But they they like the show. They like the narrative. But they like the way they watch. They like the ritual of being together and sitting in front of the TV. Because this is nostalgia is also about that. Nostalgia 
first of all, there's a, a, an author called Amy Holdsworth, and she says nostalgia is firstly connected to the home, like the word nostalgia, the feeling of nostalgia, soldiers on the world, missing home. So this is where nostalgia comes from. You, you, you know that. But so TV is inside your home, right? You, you build domestic mm. memories. It's diff that's different from movies, the cinema, because it's inside your house. So when you have someone watching and you remember not only the show, especially when you've been watching that for 20 years, you remember the beginning of the show, but you remember yourself when you watched it. So you, whether you used to watch with a friend or with popcorn or you get a sandwich, sit on the couch, you remember your own life. So it starts uh, to, to build an identity within the show. And it's not only about watching it anymore. It's not only about the characters. It's about yourself as well. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I was going to ask a question about streaming being like, I know like it doesn't, it's not the same, like you said, Manny, like it, there's no set time, but I feel like with streaming, what it's done is like actually re um, revitalize some shows that actually got canceled maybe too early and all of a sudden people like oh this show is great and then all of a sudden it creates a following for a show that only had maybe 60 episodes or only had like two seasons or one season and it's like what happened like um what is the there's a show that i was watching that that happened to um the the um the b in apartment 23 or something like that oh, yeah, it, it just yeah. Had like the bit the bit from the apartment 23 yeah i watched that it, it's a good show it's so <laughs> funny that show is so funny and then james vanderbeek's playing himself so yes! you have the extra nostalgia of <laughs> dawson's creek and you're just like whoa and they canceled that show out of nowhere the last episode is like and it's done and you're like what they it, but the, the it was so good and i feel like streaming can sometimes revitalize a show and create a cult following not that they would bring a show back but at least it kind of creates maybe a new appreciation it's, for something that was underappreciated possibly in its time or something when you, you say that dan um i also think of you and gilmore girls because i know you went into <laughs> like a whole like whole streaming it, yeah, yeah. thing <laughs> about it but like it's interesting because when you brought that up, I'm like Gilmore Girls. Like you, you're like getting into this show. I guess it's a good thing because then it it also forms new cults, right? So like, and it also could form a new show. So if a producer, um, as you were saying, Clarice, like if producers start to see fans are are reacting a certain way and demanding something, they're like, well, maybe it's time to do a a reboot. Maybe it's time to bring try to bring that that back and some people are good at that and i think some nostalgic shows that come back are good like i would i would mention cobra kai um yeah. is oh my god to me one of the better shows that have um found the balance of cheesy nostalgia with um keeping i wouldn't i, I don't want to say cobra kai is mainstream like it's pretty i guess it's pretty mainstream but not everybody watches cobra kai but i think they found a good balance of like how to bring the eighties back, but not badly. <laughs> yeah. I, if I you think know what I mean? I do. And it's a good example because Cobra Kai, it's, you get a cult film. So, right. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was a, 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 a cult, but you don't do a, it's not a sequel. It's not a, a, a rem, remake. It's just, it's a spin-off, but it's so well done. And you have the yeah. same actors, but you also have new ones and you have a new story and they have their families. So it's a good way. As uh, Twin Peaks as well, they, they had uh, mm -hmm. 20 years later, the third season. So it is a way of, this is happening a lot. So you had Fuller's House, um, Gilmore Girls. I think people from the 80s, uh, well, we're from the 80s. And I don't know you, but I am. I, I am definitely from the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so TV shows from the 80s and the 90s, 
they have been having a, a g great feeling of nostalgia and they're coming back. So we have Stranger Things, let's wear on the 80s and you will have many uh, pop culture products that actually make it, paying homage to the 80s because this is where we're at. Maybe in 20 years, mm -hmm. we'll be talking about the year 2000, but nothing happened on the oh, on please, 2000, no. right? It's just going to be all <laughs> it's not that fun. I think 80s, then. yeah, 80s and 90s, we, we peaked as a culture. <laughs> like, yeah. Like that. That, I, oh, I would say the same. <laughs> this is happening. So, people, we want mm -hmm. to see. Um, things from the 80s again and this uh the the, the industries could see that and they are doing that mm -hmm. they're giving us many many pieces of nostalgia uh, and i also wanted to say something about the, the when they cancel a show uh i wrote a, a paper on that recently uh, a master student of mine he wrote a dissertation and and with an e was a great case because it's from the book, right? Adaptations from the book. But after four seasons, uh, they just canceled the series. And fans went crazy. I think it's been more than a year, two years, I think. Uh, maybe more, sorry. <laughs> I don't remember the dates. But people actually put an outdoor on Times Square saying, please save Anne with an E. Right? It, they had... Um, one more over one million signatures uh, requesting please bring back in with any the producers did nothing but sense eight for example or heroes are some shows that have been oh canceled God. yeah so the producers did something right yes so this is cool so let's do an, another episode uh, they, let's do a film but let's sum up things but let's give something back to the fans because they're sad and yeah. Star Trek that happened, they wrote letters. And so maybe uh, sometimes the fans have some response, but sometimes they don't. So it will depend. I think yeah. I, I love that you brought up Sense8 because um, recently that not recently, I forget how long ago that is at this point, because the pandemic made me like forget years. <laughs> me too, but, um, but Sense8, me and my wife really loved the, the first, it was two seasons and and we were like, how how is this show not being seen everywhere? It was such an amazing, inclusive. I think it, I think it was brilliant writing. And then I looked into it more. And the reason why is that they were filming in so many different locations around the world that it cost so much money for this show to be made that they couldn't keep it up. So I think if they could find a way to do it, they would have continued. But I love, love that they found a way to give us two hours to wrap up the show because I felt horrible when they were like, show was canceled. Like I had in, in recent years, I have not been that attached to a show where I was like, no way. Like, there's no way that they canceled the show. The show's too good. It's too, it's too brilliant. Like there's just no way. And then when I found out, I, I get it. And that, and that's what sucks. Like, if money gets involved, yeah, you know, like because they had, they made they had to make that two hour special because so many people wrote in letters. I mean, they the LGBTQ community was like uproar because like that show represented so much of that community, mm. and like all of a sudden it was just like, well, it was just too much money. Um, have you seen it, Dan? No, no, I don't think. Dude, I've seen since. It you need to yeah. go, you need to watch Sensei. It's, yeah. it's just, so, it's like, I guess it's like a superhero movie, but like just done so well. You're going to love it. I think you're going to mm -hmm. love it because it, it's just, talk about like cult. I'm like a fan right now. Fan, I'm, yeah. I'm you're being a fan. Out, like, I'm like, exactly oh my God. <laughs> it was very respectful. Of course, they got money out of it as well, of the film they make. But, yeah. but, but it is a sort of respect as well because Mm. There, there's no balance right between fans and producers mm. though they will produce yeah. and in streaming right now you have many many titles being produced so it's, oh. it's easier to just let's see what happened and mm. oh it didn't work let's just cancel it but if you're a fan and you're a fan of it you become attached to this mm. canceled show it's like you're an orphan, you're always, I, I, I need my life. I, I planned my whole 
last week and my whole year. <laughs> I was expecting to get home and see that. And then it's canceled. Yeah. So, But then nostalgia had, uh, comes along as well because people yeah. will probably, and with an E, really, people are still everywhere every now and then. Really? I go see uh, some communities of fans on television shows. Mm -hmm. And there's always a, like save and with an E, please come back <laughs> with and with an E. I, I liked and with an E even more mm -hmm. than Sense8, I think. So. I'm more <laughs> I, I got to check out that show. I, I don't think I've ever... Um ever heard of i think might have i might have heard it but i'm not i don't think i've ever checked it out and with an e it's beautiful like, i gotta check it out yeah it's i'll beautiful. check that out remember manny you and i used to watch a show it was uh, uh for one season not even possibly a i know what you're season. gonna say it was called john from cincinnati oh my god i and... thought about that <laughs> as soon it was as with this conversation started it was mind blowing. that show is mind-blowing and one we were the only ones we used to watch with our friends like um there was something Lee, we were watching. Lee was also into it. Yeah, but it was one yeah. show we'd watch before that, and then everyone would go away, and then Manny and I were left to watch John in Cincinnati, John from Cincinnati, and and then they canceled it, and I was like, "What's happening?" I, I was like devastated because they had just it just came to a peak of being like this guy can float, he's got powers, there's something going on, we didn't know who this guy is, and then they show. Well, they were like, they, yeah. like the theory was that it was like it's supposed to be based on Jesus Christ. That's why it was like John from Cincinnati, JC. Like there was yeah. so many. And that was that turned into a whole fan thing because everybody was coming up with theories because it got canceled. Yeah. Of why I think if that show came out now. People would be able to handle it more. I think it was over everybody's head. And Possibly. unfortunately, it came out yeah. too early. So people good. weren't ready for that it. Show is so that show good. is good. I and I'm and I can't it. find it anywhere. It's, it's you can't find it anywhere. Can't find it it's anywhere. They don't even. It, you can't even. It's as it. if it was. Yeah. It's as Done. if like you have like the Mandela theory, like it, in its different world. Like Dan and I are talking about it, but like it didn't really exist. Yeah. Like, oh no, yeah. Know. No one knows. Yeah. It. Like it's like we're like there's nothing. Like what? Like, what? It's like no what? record <laughs> of it ever. Like it's just like we weren't watching anything. No, it, you can. I did watch. I used uh. to like go on like um, like websites where they talk of like people were talking about it and like it, it was um, the, some some people wanted it back, but I don't think enough. I didn't. I don't think it was enough of a cult yeah. following. I think it was no just very very thin line uh, mm -hmm. of that. But it but is. You know I, it is always a thin line because you create a community. So when you think mm -hmm. about cult following, you're you expect a community, like this is, would be the classic idea, a community that gathers and they recognize themselves, okay, so here I have people that are similar to me, we have the same taste and we have the same interests. And this is a fandom, right? So when you say nobody has ever watched the show, it almost doesn't <laughs> exist, but then you go online and you say, okay, so there's a community here. Some people yeah. have have watched it so i'm not crazy <laughs> other people know <Yeah>. this show <laughs> <laughs> right? and so this you get you create attachment and a sense of belonging and this is what fandom is all about yeah i actually have a, a question is um you were bringing up telenovelas okay and you said it's too mainstream but i will tell you that my mother my grandmother <laughs> they love it love telenovelas <laughs> like obsessed with telenovelas like my mom used to watch soap operas all the time and i feel like soap operas although mainstream have their own cult following even i know about you know different like parts of so oh, soap operas because my lives, mom yeah. like days of our lives general hospital i was watching that you know my i was watching that with my mom she would record it during the yeah. day we'd get home from school, we're watching this. Um, but telenovelas, my mom will have that on the background. And I sit yeah. there sometimes and watch. And even if you don't know the language, you're like, there's some crazy things happening here. And people <laughs> yeah. are obsessed with it. I mean, like you were saying, like, is it a cult though? Because like people must get into those shows. Like they're that mainstream. Yeah, but it was so many fans. It's a very controversial way. Of, of what I did on my thesis was quite quite crazy, because it's not common to say um, to say that a mainstream cult like telenovela would be uh, could be cult, could be a cult show, 
but in Brazil, I think it's so it's so much uh, not only famous, not because of the number of the audience, but what it represents, how mm. how is attached to the culture. Uh, it's the most important. Well, I think right now some people are saying that it's getting lower audiences. Uh, it's, they're losing audience because of streaming, but it's still very strong. Mm. And what I did was I asked some people uh, online, like hundreds of people, uh, what would be a cult telenovela? So I was expecting them to name some titles, some some ex- specific telenovelas they would remember. And I got uh, the, the top 10 I made. So some people, uh, I think like more than 200 people named 60 telenovelas. So they were kind of bringing up the same um mm. Uh, the, the first one, I think, Hockey Santeiro would be the most telenovela that people most think it could be a cult telenovela. But even though many people replied which telenovela they think it could be cult, when I was, uh, then I had focus group talking uh, deeply uh, conversations with people, and they would say, well, I don't think there can be a cult telenovela. I think this is a classic. I think this is something that uh, we remember. I think this was a famous one. But cult is extremely attached with the notion of non-mainstream show. So mm-hmm. I was trying to talk, uh, to, to kind of unbuild or destroy this concept of why? Why does it have to be a, a small community? Why does it have to have just a few followers what if it's just a cult mainstream of course i'm not alone on that uh, uh, matt hales studied fans and defined cult and he was starting to admit uh, mainstream cult and also well, some other authors that I, I i coach on my thesis so I, it's not only me but i i went deeply into the idea and the goal of saying that telenovelas can be cult but of course not all telenovelas some telenovelas and that's when i identified why were they cult when i was discussing on the focus group why is this telenovela cult why is hoxon theater cult they would say oh because it was a different aesthetic oh because it had a, a critical approach on politics oh, or because it was a trash we have a, a telenovela called vamp it was vampires. It was a, a telenovela <laughs> from the 90s. And they had like, they, you, you know, they would commercialize. I remember we had, we would buy the, the teeth, you know, the vampire plastic teeth. <laughs> so the kids were using it and would have the sticker album from the telenovelas. So you have some kind of memorabilia and a this kind of follower that some telenovelas have more than others so telenovelas in general are not called but some telenovelas they can create Uh this feeling of even today and that's why i said about uh, that nostalgia plays a role because when i had these 10 telenovelas most of them i think eight of them were old telenovelas that people were remembering Uh only one or two were were current or like two or three years mm. previously they were on air but usually they would mention old telenovelas so so thing. a telenovela is a genre so oh. like i would so you're saying a telenovela is like um almost soap opera but yeah, there's there different shows okay so there's different shows that you're saying that even because they're older people find them to be "Quote unquote classic or more nostalgic because they were they just were they had a different feel than exactly. what it is. Uh, exactly. Okay. So first of all, let me explain because uh, soap operas are very long, right? You'd be like one, two, three, ten years. Yeah. Days of our lives forever. Oh Cor- <laughs> I think it's still going on. England, yeah. It's, it's going to end. <laughs> yeah. It's is ending. It? Yeah. Days of our lives is gonna, ending. It's ending, and I think it's going to be. Sh- on a streaming service, but it's ending on on like broadcast television. Oh wow! Our lives is like not going to be on broadcast television. Anymore. Well, wow. that that's a big deal. So telenovelas, that's, <laughs> that's something. Um, yeah. 
telenovelas will last uh, six months, seven months. Oh. Even, so one tele- they, they are short. So we say it's a format of, um, I don't know if there's this difference, I'm being quite technical right now, but a genre would be like drama or comedy. And in, in Brazil, we study that a telenovela would be a format because it's a specific way of telling a narrative, like telling a story. So you would have everyday chapters uh, they last 45 minutes to one hour and they will last, uh, they used to be longer. They used to have around mm. 200 episodes. So this would be eight months, nine months. Right now they're actually getting shorter. So in six months, some telenovelas. So in 10 years, we'll have a lot of telenovelas and we have telenovelas um, at least three, maybe four times a day. So you have it six o'clock, Whoa. seven o'clock, nine o'clock, 11 o'clock. PM. So our prime time is full of telenovelas. So there are a lot of telenovelas. So when people name uh, 60 telenovelas, I mean, 200 people name this same 60 or 50 telenovelas, this means something because they actually have watched 400 telenovelas. And I asked <laughs> them to name one, right? So yeah. That's why when we have one oh. telenovela that 60 people mentioned uh, the same telenovela, it means that they remember this one and this is the telenovela they think it's called. And why is that? So it's wow. different from a soap opera because if you have the okay. International Emmy Awards, they have the award for best telenovela. They actually call it telenovela, not soap operas because it's, it's wow. Yeah. There's a that, I never first knew that. Time I heard because... that definition. And that I makes... can't believe that you're saying like once it's done, it's over. Like it's yeah. a book that you put on the shelf and yeah. it's gone. And these people still remembered that book. Exactly. That makes so much yeah. sense because of the idea of a novel versus a novella, right? Like, so the novella yeah. is a short novel and it's very small. It's like less than uh less than 200 pages. I don't know. Well, it's, it's, it's a small book. And then, then there are novels that could be like totally epic. Oh, yeah, I, I so never you knew spend that. I like they were very similar. Oh, you man. spend every day watching the telenovela, the telenovela ends. Some telenovelas they go. Uh, there's there was a telenovela called Brazil Avenue, and mm. the, the, it was such a huge success that mm. actually people would worry in the last episode, let's we'll say chapter, last chapter, we people would actually worry about like the lights will shut down and. The president didn't go to uh, to a, a parade or a commitment, something they had, wow. because they said no, nobody's gonna be there, and <laughs> the streets were empty. Because last chapter of a telenovela sometimes is a big deal, not every time, but once in a while a telenovela becomes something big. And when I would say hmm. this is a cult, right? Yeah, Brazil Avenue. Yeah. It's a cult, but foreigners, um, like I was, I, I went to the UK, I spent five months in England researching and talking to the main researchers on cult, and they wouldn't understand how a telenovela could be called mm. because they, was, they were thinking mainstream soap operas. And I, it's hard to explain because it's such a, a specific case. Mm. It's very national and it's very mm. Latin, but even in Latin America, Brazilian telenovela has its specificities and it's very particular. I am. Wow. I can't believe. I'm so happy I learned what that was. And <laughs> yeah. I have to I have to agree that there you can call it a cult. Like if you're saying that the whole city could shut down because everybody just wanted to watch this the whole all country. together. They, the whole country. <laughs> yeah. The whole country. Like who cares that it's mainstream that many people is still a cult. Like people would gather the in a bar, watches, uh, the bars yeah. who usually uh, have what? soccer match. The, the bar exactly. would have big screens. People would gather to see the last chapter of Brazil Avenue. I'm telling you. See that, that, see, that makes me, sense is, though to, is, yeah. to be cult, right? Because it's like, if we're looking not just at Brazil, but like, in the global sense, right? There's a very, there's this audience that's so intensely involved in it. And outside of that audience, everyone's like, I have no, I don't understand why that is cult. Then on the global scale, then that makes sense. Exactly. Sure. How, how sure. strong and, and how deep it was, how, how strong people felt about it. Yeah. Yeah. 
in wow. Argentina. I'm, I'm excited. When, Brazil, when, when this telenovela uh, was aired in Argentina, uh, uh, I think a few days or months later, in the last chapter, I, I think they went to a, a, a football stadium or like soccer stadium and they had a big screen. On the stadium, like a, I mean, a that's show, a big you know, deal. A concert. That's a huge that's deal. That's a huge deal. And I mean, if you're there. telling me that, uh, if you're telling me a Latin American country is using bars that normally, like the only other thing that I've seen other countries in the world go crazy over is football, yeah. football, uh, soccer, uh, World Cup. Everything shuts down. It it's, was the same. It's, it's if you're saying that, that to me, that's a cult following. Like, yeah. who cares how many? Who cares if it's only ten people or a million billion people? That's like, what it's I go about. That's my thesis. Yeah. Thank you, Manny. Yeah. <laughs> there, I mean, I, I agree. To, it's totally amazing because I'm thinking of a podcast. Um, they're called. Uh, they're called. I was looking this up as you're talking. Uh, novellas uh, con cafecito. They talk about the novellas of their of their uh, childhood. Shout out to them. They're on hiatus for right now, but. And the one part, the novella that they were talking about was called, I think, Teresa. And they just every episode was just about this one novella. And I'm like, I, it's amazing to think now kind of the way you are contextualizing it for us, like to think like, oh, they are looking at something that has an ending. And, and, yeah. and you know, and so where where it's not just and it's just, it doesn't have as much going on, but they're they're looking at it. And they're knowing that it's coming up to an end or that they are there had it's already an ending. But it's really interesting to think like there that's a that's such a niche podcast. When I came across them, when they followed us, I was like, God, that's so interesting. And now thinking about this, like contextually, it makes sense for it to be cult because I have never seen another podcast like that, I think, uh, out there. Yes. Manny I, I don't understand how there's an argument to this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh, well, Manny, welcome to academia. There's always an argument. I know. So I'm just like, man, I'm like, if you're defining a like people went to a stadium to watch. Yeah. This. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. You I mean, know, like, because like, like, I would say that Star Wars is a cult. I would say, yeah, it wasn't a TV show, but now they are, right? Mm -hmm. But like, I would, you can say that Star Wars is mainstream. It's made it into the mainstream world. People love it. It's mm -hmm. seen everywhere, but there are still, there's the average fan. Then there's the people that dress up, people that get really into it. And now they built more chapters in the mm -hmm. world, the saga, because of it. Yeah. So like, why couldn't that go? Why couldn't that translate to a telenovela? You know, like, I don't understand where the argument. Yeah, cultural barriers. Yeah, yeah it's I mean, cultural. I think it's just the idea barriers. of telenovela. And, and, yeah, and, I think you're right. You know, it, the fact that you explained what it was. See, I used to think a telenovela was another word for like soap opera. Yeah, so now that you've totally made this. Oh, my God. Like the show's only on for eight six to eight months it's telling a story it will be done like you said dan like mm -hmm. there is an ending to this it's just What's a very long movie and that's like, why people spend ending. their lives watching telenovelas because <laughs> there's another one let's watch this one and let, there's another yeah. one right now wow. we have pantanal yeah. going on it, it will be the, the one that is actually everybody's talking about a lot of memes on the internet with politics and mm. environment okay. so it, and it was actually the the they, everyone is talking about nostalgia because it was a telenovela from the 90s, Pantanal, mm -hmm. but from a, from a channel that doesn't exist anymore, from the TV channel uh, doesn't exist anymore. So now Global, which is the main uh, TV channel and producer here in Brazil, uh, got the, the rights and they made their own Pantanal. So they it's mm -hmm. a remake, but from another oh. producer. And it's everyone wants to watch because you want to watch because if i watched it in the 90s i want to see this new version right i want to check i want to it's kind of checking ourselves right say will i like it again was it good when it's a rerun this is even stronger because you say why did i like this so so bad Right, yeah, kind welcome of to our podcast. Welcome to our podcast. So <laughs> that's what we do on our podcast on like the lighter side when we're not at the nostalgia 101. We me and Dan put things to the test. So like we sometimes ruin our childhood because we're like, it was so good. And we'll sit yeah. there and watch and we're like, what 
why did we think it was good? That was not good. That that was terrible. Like, or we'll try like a candy or, or like uh, listen to an album that we thought was great when we were teenagers. So like, it's just that. Yeah. Like, so what you're saying, yeah, that's like, why, because you put yourself you know, to the test, but because society changes as well and you change yeah. with society. And of course you grow up, but you also think, well, this is not funny. This is racist or something like that. Right. This is sexist. Yeah. And it, it, it's not yeah. funny anymore. So society changes. We change. So mm. this is why remakes uh, are sometimes a better option. So in Pantanal, the mm. novella, this is happening. And they changed some things. So the, the young people are mm. even more uh, engaged in political uh, issues. Wow. In the 90s, we weren't, I think. So it, it's an interesting telenovela, but also the, the rerun experience because Pantanal has been a rerun as well in other many channels have broadcasted mm. this telenovela. But it would this would happen like it's very good. It's a very good telenovela. It, it passed the nostalgia test. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, awesome. Uh, yeah, Pantanal definitely does. But because it's uh, also from uh, this aspect of growing up where you want to see what you once have seen but you also want to pass it on to the new generations so while my mother used to watch that you said your mother or your grandmother used to watch telenovelas mm -hmm. so this is something nostalgia is something actually uh it, you people can communicate right like you share experiences and it's from one generation to the next so this is good thing of a remake of or a rerun you check yourself, like you yeah. put yourself to the test, but you also pass it on. Like this, I used to like mm. that. Now you, you, you young people, you have to watch it. Yeah. yeah. So let me. Wow. So going on now to, so American television obviously is streamed in Brazil. When you were younger, what became like a cult following that? Like, have you seen like shows that maybe were mainstream here, but became or like not that great in America that became like this huge hit in Brazil? OK, so uh, Brazilian television has a lot of influence from uh, the U.S. television. Uh, many, many TV shows are either imported from the U.S., or uh, when you import scripts, right? So we, we will have some TV shows that are Brazilian, where are copy or from. But in, from the 80s and the 90s, I remember there, I, I used to watch a lot of cartoons or sitcoms and series. And one, <laughs> I remember on the email I sent you, I was saying that I, I wanted to tell you the names in Portuguese, of course. Yeah translated literally so you would try to guess <laughs> what show is that <laughs> so i don't know how famous they were for you because they were really famous here but in portuguese they would be literally translated as the dragon's cave can you guess what that is the dragon's what cave cave yeah the dragon's cave. i read her email so i think i know all these answers <laughs> <laughs> the dragon's lair, the drag, the dragon, dragon's cave, dungeons and dragons. Yeah, dungeons and dragons. Dungeons and dragons. So they yeah. just said the dragon's cave. Got it. Yeah, in Portuguese, okay. this is the translation. So Dungeons and Dragons was a very, very famous um, show here, and recently, um, mm. uh, 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 I, I don't remember which uh, which company, but it was a car company. They made um an advertising did you get there was this in brazil only because they they made uh like a biopic with the characters from the drag the dungeons and dragons hmm. so really and they made a teaser first so everybody thought there would be a movie uh f with actors right so a biopic from dungeons and dragons and people went Oh, crazy about it so there's gonna be a movie but it's it was not it was just they were shooting some commercial some car commercial people were very disappointed because it was a big thing here in the 80s and they actually brought it back recently very recently like three four years ago so oh, they are they are coming out with a dungeons and dragon live action uh, really? movie 
Really? I did see I did see a trailer uh, on YouTube. I wasn't think, it uh, a car? <laughs> no, car no. Commercial. OK, <laughs> no, no, because I think with the coming of um, Stranger Things and how Dungeons and Dragons, the, the game, yeah, uh, you know, it's basically based on the Dungeons and Dragons game and a lot of the characters names and everything. People are really into D and D, and they're they actually are making a movie of it. Kind of looks like Willow. Mm. Looks like uh, you okay. know. Um, I would uh, definitely watch this. I would. Yeah, yeah. It. Uh, I did. I. I. I watch watch a lot of like what's coming out in two thousand twenty four, two thousand twenty five teasers, oh. and that was a teaser that came on. I gotta. Say, I don't think it was a car. A car. Uh, <laughs> okay, car commercial. commercial okay. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. People here I'm waiting for the magic. Movie. I'm waiting for the Magic the Gathering movie. That's a movie I'll wait yeah. for. <laughs> I never got in, I never game. got into Magic the Gathering, but that was my nerd game. So was it was game. like Friends a big hit yes, in Brazil? I am a big fan. This is like that's what I am a fan of. If you ask yeah. me, Friends definitely. I love the I mean, revival, right? The special role. I love everything about it. <laughs> yeah i mean but, but it is it's it got even bigger like recently during the pandemic it like took another life on itself like mm -hmm. even my niece you want to talk about like passing it on to your the, the younger generations my niece was quoting or just talking about episodes and i was like you're watching friends like now like mm. you know i don't find it I got you're not going to like what I have to say, but yeah, I so look at it, it and don't I, say it. No, no. I look <laughs> at it and I'm like, I definitely liked it. I don't think it's bad. Like yeah, it, it's a good show. It stays. It stays nostalgic to me. I just didn't understand the zeitgeist that it was like it took a whole like there's other shows that I think are smarter, but I guess it stayed just in the right cadence for yeah. so many people to like and and relate to and think, oh, I'm that character. Oh, I'm that kind of friend. That that's me. Like Which if we were one friends, is your favorite, we were right? together, yeah. And if we were if we were living together, that's what you would be like. So I think mm -hmm. it was it came out at a great time. And I get why my niece, who's now in college, likes the show. Because the mm -hmm. show is about like when your friends were your family. Like the time where your friends were everything that you hung out with. There was no yeah. other thing your that you did. Like friends that were period. Your family. That's yeah, that awesome. period of time. Because like, you know, how the show ended. They all like, you know, they started having kids. This one got married. This one yeah. had to go get a, uh, a career and elsewhere. It almost never ended I, because the reruns were so everywhere. Oh, oh yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, that's the thing. They were reruns. And then now with the streaming service, it's just like. You could catch up on anything. So like it definitely mm -hmm. I, I could see why it would be great in Brazil as well. Like yeah. it just it took on a whole great, other Of course, life. here not on, on open television. So pay TV would would run uh, oh, okay. air hmm. friends. So there's a, hmm. a, a class. Uh, oh, wow. Some, yeah, there's some. So what's the your favorite or what was a cult cartoon? Uh, oh, I I really like uh, Dungeons and Dragons, but cartoon I would say. Well, here uh, Get Along Gang was a big thing. I I remember Get I liked gang. it. <laughs> yeah, That's so funny. Oh, and I like you know which one? <laughs> Try to guess this one. The there's nothing like um, I don't know if you know it's Hanna Barbera, so maybe it's very famous. But it, in Brazil, the literal translation was fire horse, <laughs> but it's wildfire. So, wow, oh, I never wildfire like fire Princess horse? Sarah. Yeah, wild, wildfire. Yeah. Really? It was fire wildfire. horse, the translation, literal translation. Really? And I used to like that. Yeah. But we have yeah, a, we had the Jetsons, uh, Smurfs, Flintstones, Muppet Babies, Sesame Street. Uh, yeah, but like those, like I, wow, would, would you call everything. those cult, cults, or that's just more mainstream? No, I no, I would not call them cults. Uh, no, Dungeons and Dragons, yeah, 
I yeah. Don't yeah. think I would. I th- I think if there's a cult cartoon, it probably is something like The Tick. I used to watch that. No one really watched The Tick. Um, Freakazoid, which was weird. And then <laughs> on Adult Swim, Metalocalypse, which that show got canceled out of nowhere. And then they had to like make one episode that was like a musical episode to wrap everything up. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. But it, it's interesting to kind of see or like Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Yeah, that's like Sesame weird- Street oh, may no. be a bit cold because there are like puppets and they, they still sell the dolls sometimes i think they they were kind of a revival of the mm-hmm. dolls here but i didn't watch mm. this but in brazil it was a you didn't big... yeah i didn't because i am from a small town in in my state it didn't run sesame street but in sao it. paulo it's a big thing yeah but i didn't get it oh, wow but we also had wow. some uh series like wonder years and i think that's oh. kind of a cult and that's like very nostalgic su- yeah super american like super american. Is like that is like one of i remember watching that show and being totally confused when i was a kid being like what is happening like why wonder is- years yeah Wasn't that, didn't that like, take place in massive was that the one that took place in massive Peak? what no i don't no, no, know about that i'm not sure what was one of years about? Is, who was the characters? One of years. Fred Savage. Was, uh, uh, Fred Savage. Yes. Okay. No, it didn't. Sorry, I was talking yeah, about. No. I was talking about the other show, um, with uh, oh man, I'm drawing Everybody blanks. Loves Raymond. That was no. a massive big. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was uh, it was just the guy whose son uh, sings the song "Blurred Lines." Um, oh, Growing Pains. Growing Pains. That's what it was. Yes. Yeah, that was in Massapequa. That was in Massapequa. Yeah. Long Island. Uh, have you watched? I remember watching when I was a kid, uh, also American show, MacGyver. Oh, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> so we had that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, yeah. that show is great. In the Portuguese, for the, the Brazilian title in Portuguese would be a literal translation uh, Profession Danger. God. <laughs> Oh my god. That's the name of the show. <laughs> that that man, is awesome. That show is so weird. That those show shows is, are so weird. So <laughs> so those shows is so funny because they're um so bad <laughs> in a way that they were so bad they're good like they were so so unbelievable. Yeah. But yeah, like you were show. just like but like it became like um like if you were good at putting th- like doing things you were called like uh, the MacGyver. Oh, you MacGyver. Yeah. yeah. Like it became it's, it became a, 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 a saying, yeah. you know, like, you know, if you have a f- friend who could always oh, get you out of something. MacGyver, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like it's funny because like but <laughs> if you watch those shows now, you're like, what? Like the acting is terrible. It's just ridiculous. You should do the, the nostalgia test with MacGyver. I, <laughs> we should. Yeah. You're like. It like the it, it's like just so it's so like unbelievable, but at the same time, when it's so fun, you just go like, yeah, I'm I'm into this. It's let's do it. it. You know, yeah, I get it. Wow, wow, so good. Wow. Well, I, I feel like we can keep going for hours, but yeah, I'm worried about the time. Been, I think this is no, no, so, so great. This has been so great. I've learned so much. Just learning about telenovelas blew my mind. Everything else was amazing. You have brought so much value to this podcast with all that you brought. I'm so, so grateful. Thank the, you. The, so great. Yeah, I I'm, learned so much. Yeah. And I'm I want to so say, happy. yeah, I am so happy. I found out what the actual definition of a telenovela is. And yeah, and I totally agree with your thesis. And whoever is in <laughs> England you. who disagrees, if you're in England and you disagree with her, you're wrong, and you could come. You come to New York and deal with me. I so. wish I had students Lithology like burn. you. I, you make me feel like I'm a good teacher because you learn so much. I wish my students. Oh. Would no, say you did. That it was great. I'm so, so I'm so happy. Oh. Yeah, I'm right. so happy. I, we were so able great. to. Yeah, I can't. I'm just like now. I'm looking at telenovelas a whole different way. And now I gotta. Mm. I gotta sit down and yeah. have a I'll have a telenovela day with my mom. Yeah, you like, should. Like, I mean, why are you so obsessed with this? No, but I get it now. Like, you need to be watching every day because yeah, you want to get yeah. to the end. So yeah, but uh, Clarice, thank you so much for being here, everyone. Thank you for listening. Please put your comments, your questions, and everything at the bottom. 
um, engage with your ideas of cult television. Tell us your favorite cult shows, cult movies, cult cartoons. We'd love to hear all about it. And hopefully we can have you back on some other time. Maybe we'll focus in on one show. That would be awesome. We'd love to have you back. I would love and, to come um, back. Oh, we'll yeah, put in MacGyver to the test. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone, thank you so much for listening. And I'll uh, we'll see you on the next uh, episode. Peace. Peace. Bye bye. All right. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Please subscribe to the Nostalgia Test podcast to know when new episodes drop. Don't forget to leave us five stars and a positive review so more people can find the podcast. Share your thoughts and memories on today's topic on our Twitter at Nostalgia Test and on Instagram at The Nostalgia Test. Tune in next time because you never know what pop culture will pop up on The Nostalgia Test.